All right, where we left off was learning how to change the, the line art thickness using layer styles. And I thickened the igloo by using layer styles, went from this to this. Now I want to thin out the tree using layer styles. So first I deleted all the white around it using the magic wand and delete. And now I'm gonna double click on the layer itself, just double left click to get to the stroke options. And I'm gonna change the stroke color to white all the way in the upper left hand corner. Say okay. And now I need to position that, that white, not on the outside of the tree, so you can see the white's growing from the outside, but to the inside of the tree, the inside of the existing pixels. And that way I can thin it out. Now there's a third option besides inside and outside, and that's center, and center splits the difference. So if I couldn't get it exactly where I wanted going inside, I can click on center, and then it will grow it both on the inside and the outside. So however you can get to the, the amount of thickness you want. So I want about that much. I'm gonna say okay. But now I have these white pixels that are just not very efficient, right? I only have black pixels in other layers. I want only black pixels in this layer. So what do I need to do? I need to rasterize, not the layer, but the layer style. So I right click on it and then say rasterize the layer style. Now the effect options, like for the igloo, will go away for the tree and those pixels are now in the layer, which means I can use my magic wand with contiguous unchecked Click the white anywhere, and it will select the white in that layer everywhere, and then hit delete. And I have a thin tree. Okay, what about this one? Well, this one, I like the thickness, but I want to play with its arrangement. So I'm going to use my move tool, and I'm going to move it up a little bit. And I might actually move the tree up a little bit too. I could use my arrow keys or I can just drag, drag and drop with my with my move tool and the and my trackpad. And then sometimes I want to use my arrow keys just to nudge it into place. And I'm trying to see how these, these different elements kind of line up with each other. And then if I want to resize it, I think I want this to be a little bit taller, this string, I can hit Command T, which is a shortcut for free transform. So if I go up to the top of the screen where it says edit, and then go to free transform, that gives me a transform box that I can use to make it bigger or hold down shift and stretch it out. I think I want to do a little bit of both. So they feel like kind of atomic waves coming off of this, this tree shape, which I want to kind of double as a mushroom cloud. So much going on. All right. Because I still haven't erased anything. Then I've got the hands. I want to thin out the hands just like I did the tree. So I double left click on it, click on stroke, put it to the center, and then take it down until the hands are about the, the width I want. Let's say there. Then I'm going to right click on it and say rasterize layer style. Then I'm going to zoom in with command plus and use the magic wand again to select the white pixels and delete them. And now I can make the hands bigger or smaller. They're all in one layer using command T. But what if I want more space between the hands? So to do this, I need to actually separate them out. And to do that, I'm going to use the lasso tool and just, I'll turn off all the other layers for a moment just so you can see it. And I'm going to lasso around one of the hands. So when you lasso around the hand, you can also, you can copy it, you can paste it. When you do that, it puts it onto a new layer. So if I use edit and I say copy, and then I say edit and I say paste, it will paste it onto a new layer, but it leaves the original one there. 
So let me go back a few steps. So what if instead of copying it, I lasso it and I say edit cut, which is command X. So what cut does is it copies it onto the clipboard, but it erases it from its original place. So it's a little different than delete. And then if I go to edit paste, which is command V, it will paste it onto a new layer. And that allows me to reposition it. And now I have where I had one layer asset, now I have two layer assets that I can arrange individually. And what's nice is the new versions of Photoshop kind of show you when things are in alignment with these little purple guidelines. So it's not difficult to line it up perfectly if that's what I want. And I want them to be kind of looping around the string. So with the move tool, I can move each hand individually that way. OK, what's next? Ah, uh, the Kurt Vonnegut signature. This is messy. I'm going to do Command T. I'm going to try making it a little bit bigger. And now I have to decide, and then my last element, this is why five is kind of nice, is that trash can. Now I have to decide which elements do I want and which elements do I want to erase from. Everything's been rasterized. Everything's black pixels. So let's see. I'll start with the trash can and the tree. So I really like these little puffs of smoke. And I know I don't like how the trash can and the tree are overlapping. So first I'm going to take the tree. I'm going to use my lasso and I'm just going to pick the things I want to delete. So I'm going to delete this bottom part of the tree just from the tree layer. And then I think I want to delete this inside part of the trash can. So I'm going to click on the trash can layer. So this is to get you used to the idea that you can only affect pixels within the layer you've selected. So for here, I'm going to get rid of the tree layer right there. So I don't want that little V shape. And then I'll get rid of the just the little corner of the tree layer right there. So I kind of like that V shape in there. Now the problem is when I selected, I cut a little too much and I got a little sliver. So this is what's wonderful about Photoshop. I can always go back with Command Z or with my history. And I can modify my lasso. My first Photoshop teacher, it was in 1994, said the key to Photoshop is good selecting. If you can select well, you can use Photoshop well. And it largely holds up, even though Photoshop's a lot more powerful than it was in 1994. So how do you modify your selection? Well, if I hold down Option, while I'm on the lasso tool, there'll be a little minus sign next to the, the icon of the tool. And then I can actually click and make a new shape, and it will cut it out of the original one. So I'm modifying my original shape. If I want to add to the selection, I can hold down Shift. So like in here, I want to get rid of the tree, so I'm just going to lasso what I need, but I'm going to make it a little bit too small intentionally. So when I delete from this, from the tree layer, I, I missed some of it. So if I hold down shift, I'll get a little plus sign on my lasso, and then I can increase and add to 
my lasso. Now you can also do this with the lasso options, but I tend to not like that. So this is the default lasso, which means that when you click somewhere, it deselects everything else. But if you hold down shift, it will add to it. If you hold down option, it will delete from it instead of changing the defaults of the tool. I think I'll do that for the tree here as well with this kind of popcorn shape. And you just keep playing with it. So you're happy with the result. And remember, we're not allowed to create our own pixels, but by modifying these existing pixels and kind of cutting them into the shapes we want, it's not very different than drawing or adding our own pixels to begin with. I'm gonna add a little kind of dash line here for the tree. And then I can even do what's called internal modifications. And I can move this line for the tree. I lasso it and then I use the move tool and that will cut those pixels free so I can move them wherever I want. Because remember, I didn't want a tree, I wanted a mushroom cloud. So I can use these existing lines and actually make my own. And if I copy and paste that, I can get that on a new layer and then I can command T and flip it or rotate it or resize it. I could do all these things to make it look more like a mushroom cloud. And then I might decide after all just to get rid of that little V in my tree layer. And then there's this little, this is an exercise. I don't need, want you to be hung up by perfection. But the more you practice these skills, the more comfortable they'll be when we're using them in assignments. Okay, so I've got those elements, those two elements blended. Next is this element. Now this one is a little different. I want the string to always be opaque. So basically, I don't want it to ever be interrupted by another image. So I could fill the inside of that string with white, right? And that would do my job. How would I do that? I would use the magic wand. I would click on the string layer. And I would try to click inside where the string is. But the problem is there's openings in the string. And so it's selecting all the shapes around it. So if I fill that with white by going to edit fill and choosing white, and I change it to normal mode so that it blocks the others, it will block it, but it will also block everything else. So that's not gonna work. So what I need to do is actually look at the string And I've selected inside of it. And then I decide, okay, what layer do I need to delete from inside the string? And I'm gonna leave that selection. So this is gonna show you that selections move with you. They can travel between layers. I'm gonna select the tree layer. And then I'm gonna use not delete because that will delete everything that's selected. I'm going to use my eraser tool. And my eraser is exactly what it sounds like. It has a brush, it has size, you are allowed to use it. I wanna use it at 100% opacity, at 100% hardness. And I, I pick a size that makes sense for my line art. And now, just so you can see what I'm doing, I'm gonna erase wherever something overlaps with the inside of my string. I'm not hitting delete or it will erase too much. 